name is Alicia. I lost my son. Uh, his name is Paul. I saw him on the evening of 4th of June. Everything looks very normal. And after dinner, he texted me and said, Mommy, I'm going out for a walk. I'm feeling a bit down. And I asked him, I said, you'll be home, huh? Then he said, yeah, I'll be home. That's the last time I saw him. The next moment was about 6 a.m. The police came to the door. That's where my heart dropped. I know that there is not... Something bad must have happened. So uh, the police came in. They wanted to see his room. I saw a statement that Paul wrote on his whiteboard in his room. He says that, I'm sorry I let everybody down. I asked the police officer, is my son still alive? And she said no. And that's where I broke down. I, I screamed and I broke down. And my husband came in and hugged me. My helper and my son cried. We couldn't believe that Paul is really gone. I lost him uh, by suicide. The first question I asked myself, where is Paul now? I need to know where is Paul now? Where is his soul now? Is he in heaven? Is he in hell? Is he being punished for what he has done? Will God accept him back to heaven? I struggle. I struggle with this question. And I keep crying non-stop because I do not know. I do not know. I question myself a lot. I ask myself why I didn't see all the signs that he's at the verge of giving up. I ask myself, could I have done something to save him? Why didn't he come to me when he's leaving the house? Why he didn't reach out to me? Why? I ask a lot of why. What was he thinking and did he even blame me? that I am not a good mother to him. Everything at home reminds me of him. The thought of me wanting to see Paul was so intense that I don't feel like living on anymore. It's like I could feel how Paul felt the amount of pain that he just wanted to end it all. But when I look at my to other kids, I told myself, I can't bear to let them go through the same pain that I'm going through right now. I have to bear the pain and live on. My daughter, Gloria, she has mild autistic and she's the closest to Paul because Paul is very patient with her. Occasionally, she will come and tell me, Coco, wake up, Coco, come home. Then I will tell her that Koko is sleeping in heaven. We will see him one day. So in her own special way, she misses her brother a lot. Yeah. I decided to do a tattoo of Paul's name. I just wanted him to be close to me. I took some of his ashes and I did a pendant. And I chose a rainbow pendant because it's a rainbow promise that we will meet again and I will wear it every day. It's like Paul is with me. 
A boy to me. Finally. I'm very proud of Paul. I choose to remember all these 23 years of his life and not just focus on the last chapter of his life. I want to remember my son as a sunshine boy. Paul is a very uh, extrovert guy. He has a lot of friends. He's always happy at the outside. He has a heart of helping people. By sharing Paul's story, I hope to tell other suicide survivors, especially moms like me, that they are not to be blamed for what happened to their child. We will just learn how to live with it. They will live forever in our hearts. I would want to tell the young people to reach out for help, love yourself more, and never think that you are a burden to the people around you. Hi, Papa. How are you? I mean, miss you a lot. Paul, thank you so much for being my son. I'm so proud of you. We will meet again, Paul. You just have to be there to wait for us to be united again. And we will join you when our time is up. Okay, Paul, mommy miss you. Mommy miss you. <laughs>